Welcome to the Homeless Youth Project TV show. As you know, I'm Ron Austin, and we do this show about once a month, uh, every month. And you know, the Homeless Youth Project is actually a project of uh, Panelette Productions and in, in partnership with uh, the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation. Uh, what the project is, is that uh, we go into the field where the homeless youths are at and we interview them uh, on video uh, and photos and eventually when we get enough footage we will have uh, enough to put together a documentary tentatively named uh, Homeless Youth Project Tucson, Arizona and we will make this, uh, uh, this, this documentary available to uh, uh, the schools will have a lesson plan for the schools. We'll make it available to the man and woman in the street to download the pieces of it or the whole uh, documentary. We'll make it available to the agencies that provide services uh, to homeless youth uh, for their educational purposes. Um, but our main goal is to actually get uh, or, or rather to inform the public of the realities of the conditions of homelessness and of uh, what youths have to go through and live through in order to survive on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, normally, you know, I usually have a uh, guest on my show that uh, has some sort of project, a video project or, or whatever other project of that sort that is similar uh, to my project. But in this particular case, I thought I would introduce you to the co-founder of the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation, as I am also a co-founder also. Uh, and her name is Diana Figueroa. Hi, Diana. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a concept of how we got to where we are right now doing shooting uh, videos of homeless youth and doing a documentary on the uh, on the youth that live uh, in the streets of Tucson, Arizona. So, Diana, uh, tell us, uh, what type of work do you do? I work in the social services field. I've been doing this for many years for various agencies. Uh, right now I'm working at Old Pueblo Community Services. I'm a health educator and I do um, teach classes on intervention and prevention on HIV, AIDS, hepatitis C, and STIs. I uh, work a lot in the prisons, uh, working with reentry folks who are coming out, engaging them in services in the community. Ah, uh, okay. And as you probably know, uh, as I mentioned possibly before, maybe I hadn't, I work for the Primavera Foundation, uh, which is a full-service uh, provider for uh, the uh, homeless and those in poverty in Tucson. So as you see, both of us work in social services, yet what we do is we put in our own time uh, in, uh, as, for this cause, the Homeless Youth Project. And you know, I think, Diana, I think what, we started really early on, what was, what was the, our first project? I think it was uh, the Tucson Feed the Homeless or something mm -hmm. of that sort, right? We were feeding in yeah. Santa Rita Park. Santa Rita Park, that's right. right. Every, Every two weeks we would go into uh, uh, Santa Rita Park and uh, with a group of other like-minded individuals and we would uh, take uh, sack lunches mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes triage them if that right. was available right. and also bring clothes and, and whatever else that they needed. Water. Yeah. yeah. If I remember correctly, yes. Uh, my thing was, yeah, I wanted. I, I felt at that time that this was fine. You know, saying, you know, this is putting a Band-Aid on mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with Band-Aids, but I actually wanted to uh, do more than that. Right. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us how you felt about that, <clears throat> about feeding the homeless in Santa Rita Park? I have to agree with you. I have to say that... Um, it was a feel-good thing, of course. You know, mm -hmm. we wanted to be out there. We wanted to help people um, with the limited resources that we had. 
we had a lot of information on different agencies that we could refer them to. Um, and when I was working at the Primavera, Primavera Foundation um, at that time, when we were doing that, I was very knowledgeable of the resources and where I could refer them to in the community. So I think that helped to be able to share that information with them when we would go visit the park and uh, give them food and, and water and, and whatnot. Um, I loved it. I thought it was great. But there was always a need for more. I wanted to do something more. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I think uh, we started, uh, okay, uh, see, our, our present organization is the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation, but the, the predecessor mm -hmm. to that, the name that uh, predated that was um, the Center for Creative Chaos. Yes. Huh? Remember that? I remember that. That was. <laughs> it was a bit of years. chaos too. Yes, it was. It? <laughs> that's what was so beautiful about it was the chaos. Yeah, right. And the concept <clears throat> then was that we had a, we had the Center for Creative Chaos Art Gallery, and it was on Fourth Avenue and University, right next to the Epic Cafe. And the concept was that uh, homeless artists, uh, of which there are quite quite a number in this city, uh, which you're probably not aware of. Homeless artists would get would receive 100% uh, of the profits from uh, from the sale of their art items, and uh, mainstream artists were to receive 70%. And we uh, at the art gallery was to receive the balance. And the concept was that uh, mainstream art uh, artists would support the gallery. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't quite work out that way. You know, right? Yeah. Well, we 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 gave it a shot, though. We gave it a uh, shot. It was fun, right? <laughs> and the problem was was that we never uh, reached uh, the clientele that actually buys art. Uh, the people that we actually reached were those people that like to drink wine and eat sandwiches, right? And look at art, <laughs> right? And cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. And that was really interesting. I mean, you know, the uh, the 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 artists were high maintenance, okay, and uh, it just took a great deal of time. And I think uh, after we, um, it was a situation that occurred that we kind of broke away from the Carlos T. Figueroa, no, the uh, uh, Center for Creative Chaos mm -hmm. uh, group, and we formed the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation. Correct. And then we didn't learn our lessons from the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, Center for Creative Chaos Art Gallery. No, we turned around and opened up another art right, gallery. Right. The Maz Paz Art Gallery and Studio on right. um, Stone. Stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stone near University, right. Well, you know, some people are hardheads, I think. And saying, <laughs> you know, and it takes uh, <laughs> some real hammering on their head in order to get some sense into them. Persistence. Persistence, mm -hmm. right. And so why did we name our new uh, group uh, the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation? Well, that is because Carlos G. Figueroa became a symbol of what we want to prevent as far as homelessness is concerned. <coughs> and I'm going to turn that one over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Carlos Figueroa was uh, my father. He was killed back in uh, March 4th of 2003. So we just uh, celebrated his 10 year anniversary, his death anniversary uh, a few weeks ago. And, and actually yesterday would have been his 63rd birthday. He was, he'd struggled with alcoholism um, the majority of his life and uh, was in and out of homes, different homes, and then ended up on the streets, bouncing around from shelter to shelter. He would come to my home, stay with me, um, clean up, get sober, he'd be on the wagon for a while, and then he'd fall off again and go out. Um, he went through the whole system with the VA. He was a veteran. Um, he would go get uh, mail at Primavera. He was using R&R &R at one point, which I ended up working there later. Um, so he left my home and was, again, staying from shelter to shelter and was riding his bike uh, behind Pet Boys uh, March 2nd, 2003, 
and was jumped and uh, robbed and beaten and left for dead. He was a John Doe. Uh, they took his wallet. Um, so there was no identification on him whatsoever. So he had to be fingerprinted in order to get his identification. And luckily the detective was able to get a hold of me within 24 hours that he had been assaulted and I was able to be with him up until uh, he passed on March 4th. So that was a journey right there. It began a journey. His, the end of his life began this journey for myself and for a lot of other people uh, who are dedicated and who want to make change. Um, the person who killed my father was never caught um, and that's not something that I focus on. The focus definitely is uh, raising awareness in our community. Why are, what, why are, is there homelessness? Um, why are there homeless teens or youth? Um, there's a lot, a lot of questions that we want to shed light on and we'd love to help, but we want to go beyond that band-aid. We want to make sure that we are making a difference and really doing something. Um, making sure that people are aware that these individuals have souls, they're, they're people. Um, many in our community are suffering from mental illness and people will just ignore them because they're different or weird or they don't understand. And uh, there's a lack of compassion, you know, and that's not okay. That's correct. So we decided that we would uh, use uh, Diana's father, Carlos G. Figueroa, as the symbol of our organization, uh, being a symbol of uh, one of some of those things that we want to bring about a change in in Tucson, and so we moved on from there. And I think what happened was we, I, since I was the main videographer at the time, I really didn't know where I wanted to focus. But what we did, we started uh, videotaping uh, homeless adults uh, in Tucson and. Santa Rita Park and at uh, Casa Maria um, or is it Guadalupe's? Guadalupe's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Guadalupe's. And um, started there, okay? I said, you know, we need to start doing something here, okay? Um, and this is, yeah, right, okay, I'm just, I'm just getting a few of the details out of chronological order in my head. Uh, but that's okay. You'll understand. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we started doing that. And then, um, well, actually, the predecessor to that was that we actually got out of the art gallery business. Mm -hmm. Because the, Mar the Mars Paws Art Gallery and Studio didn't, uh, <laughs> it produced as much as the Center for Creative Chaos Art Gallery right. uh, did, which is hardly anything but problem. Um, so we decided to focus then on um, um, shooting video, which to me is the core of what I'm all about. I mean, you know, I originally learned um, um, my uh, video skills here at Access Tucson. Okay, if it hadn't been for Access Tucson, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I mean, I certainly won't be able, wouldn't be able to pay the p premium. Uh, pay that uh, uh, many of the uh, p uh, professional schools that teach you uh, 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 about uh, making videos, making movies, and I wasn't really willing to go to school for years at, at, in college, you know what I'm saying, so uh, Access Tucson gave me uh, the knowledge I needed to g at least get started mm -hmm. in video. And uh, I'm not going to say that any of my video is uh, is premium material, but we'll get there one of these days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Possibly before I die, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep trucking along. Yeah, keep trucking along. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we started uh, shooting video in the parks, uh, in the feeding spots of adults. And what happened was, was that I was in bed thinking about this process of shooting video. And so a memory surfaced in my head of when I was homeless. Uh, you know, I told you I'm, I'm a recovering crack addict of 18 years. 
and uh, I'm formerly homeless myself. And I was thinking about a youth that I came in contact with, you know, saying, and um, and in thinking about that youth and the tragedy of that youth's existence, it dawned on me. I said, "Well, you know, somebody ought to tell this story." Mm -hmm. And then that's where the homeless youth project started in my head, mm -hmm. right? And we started um, we started uh, uh, shooting videos of uh, of the uh, of homeless youth, um, and then I believe at some point, am I getting ahead of myself here? At some point, we thought that we wanted to become a nonprofit. Correct. Yeah. And um, but we found that we didn't have the finance. Right. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the financial means to do that, and right. also. Um, that's when we got connected to Pan, Pan Left. Left. Pan Left Productions, right. I, I searched around uh, after finding out about the fiscal sponsorship thing. I uh, searched around for a potential fiscal sponsor. And I was looking all over the United States, okay. And uh, I just happened to run up uh, by accident, not even looking for a sp fiscal sponsor at the time, um, on Pan Left Productions. And um, which is actually a nonprofit right here in town. It's a video cooperative, okay? And uh, there's a place where anybody can go that wants to tell a story mm -hmm. and learn how to shoot video, learn how to uh, edit uh, and, and use our equipment to do so. And uh, so I found out about Panlet Productions and uh, I called uh, the executive director at that time, Mary Charlotte Thurtle, mm -hmm. and told her about us. Unfortunately, uh, Mary Charlotte died recently of cancer, a uh, very beloved person among the members of uh, Pan Left and also in the community. But I spoke with her, and uh, she came and visited the um, Center for Creative Chaos Art. Creative Chaos Art Gallery and uh, listened to our story and decided that we were a good match and uh, they became our fiscal sponsor. Yes, they did. Yeah. And that was, that was a good thing for us because that means that we could take donations and people could uh, take it off their taxes and stuff. Right. And uh, so forth and so on. Yeah, so uh, now we're an entity, the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation <coughs> and uh, you know, I mean, we started going out and shooting videos of homeless youth, uh, and you participated in uh, a couple of those, didn't you? Correct. Yeah. Yes, well, what is your impression of, of, of uh, the ones that you participated in, the youth that you came in contact with? Well, <clears throat> the couple that I did come in contact with for youth, um, because primarily I've... Oh, let me, let me pause it for a minute. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, not at the bottom of our screen, but at the <laughs> bottom of the viewer screen, there's a telephone number. And if you want to call in and ask a question or comment on anything that, you ha that, that we have to say, uh, please do so, and we'll have a, a little palaver. Great. Um, so I'm sorry. So well, my experience with youth is mm -hmm. what you asked. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to say that working with uh, homeless folks for years now um, is, again, primarily been adults. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say that when I come across working with youth, it's it's a whole other dynamic. It's another feeling, um, and it's one that it, you try to understand. How did this happen? How did this youth come to where they're at now? And, and what can we do, and um, especially because they, if they're a minor, if they are under 18, and that's a little tricky, um, but also young adults. And um, just to see how lost and confused, and it's scary, it's a scary world. You know, it's really scary out there. Um, but just sticking by them and making sure that we kind of guide them along uh, rather than just leaving them where a lot of the times they have already been or felt abandoned multiple times in their lives. So it's hard for them to trust. Without a doubt. 
you know, it's very, very hard for them to trust, and they have to turn to other means to support themselves, to take care of themselves. Um, and we need, we need to understand and not pass judgment on that. That's that's how they care for themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, it was definitely an eye-opening experience for me to work with youth. Um, recently worked with a few youth um, doing testing and whatnot, and that, uh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And as Diana said, uh, it, it is difficult to interact with the youth that are homeless because... You know, taking this a step further, the problem is is that many youths uh, living in the streets have been used and abused by predatory adults. You know, I mean, you know, a, a youth who has maybe gone a week or so without bathing, uh, without a decent meal in their belly, uh, without a uh, warm bed, will quite often be approached by an adult individual who had predatory intentions and offer them those uh, for a price. Um, and you know what the price is. I don't need to mention it. All right? uh, so what happens is those youths tend to think of uh, adults as uh, people that they want to stay away from. It's not only just the predators, but it's the general public. The general public tends to look uh, through and around homeless youths. Uh, they look at them askance. Uh, they uh, don't want to look at them directly, thereby recognizing their humanity. Uh, the uh, law enforcement treats them with, uh, treats them really bad. I mean, the you know, you've heard me say many times in the past how law enforcement will uh, uh, will take uh, pepper spray and spray their belongings so that they, they don't return to wherever they've had their belongings at and wherever they may be staying at. Um, and uh, they, they also abuse them verbally. So, you know, here we come along with camera in hand, all right, and... Um, we expect uh, the youth to just pour out their the problems that they have. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that because you know they're they're going to be very reclusive, okay, and uh, inward focused, okay, um, and and it's unfortunate that we've allowed um, our homeless youth to live in the streets, raising themselves. As I've said many times in the past, you know homeless youth cannot raise themselves. Um, and you know what will happen in that process. Uh, they, they will always go astray. Okay? And, and you know, we've got to do something about these, our youth in the street. We've got to bring them back into the fold. And we've got to uh, try to show them love and caring and give them the proper proper directions on, on as far as living is concerned. Because this is an absolute shame. The things that we have seen in the streets of Tucson, it I, I, I can't express to you uh, in proper words how uh, how bad it is out there. But anyway, um, I want to thank you for watching the Homeless Youth Project uh, TV show. I want you to thank you for uh, listening to my dear friend and co-founder of the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation. And I want to thank you, Diana, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure being here. Yeah. Thank right. You. So, And if you go to the uh, bottom of your screen, you see our website. And unfortunately, you didn't get the opportunity to call in and ask us questions. But that's all right. We'll be here again next month. And if you're on Facebook or on, on my email, I'll, I'll tell you when that's going to occur. So thank you. Thank you very much for watching the show. Cool. Huh? That wasn't so bad, now, no. was it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah.